Jeremiah chapter 20, verse number 9. The Bible says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we don't have even the capability to wrap our minds around what you've done around here today. All we can say is, blessed be the name of the Lord. All we can say is, Lord, we have longed for you to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, and you have done some of that today. But Lord, you certainly uh, have not been exhausted. You can still do far more than we can comp comprehend. Lord, we do thank you for saving Miss Natalie this morning. We thank you for the hearts that were broken and touched this morning. We thank you for sweeping through here tonight and the good singing, the good testimonies. And God, we are glad to be a part of a local church that hasn't got too big for God or hasn't programmed God out of the scene, but the Lord has to depend on God. And God, you've been faithful, Lord. Uh, time and time again, you walk through here and you bless us and you help us and you sustain us. Uh, God, uh, not to our deserving, just uh, to show your handiwork, just that you're still God and you're in control. And God, we bless you for it. God, I do pray for the families within the earshot of this church lost. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, facing uh, all kinds of peril and turmoil. Uh, Lord, just trying to grope through life. Uh, just trying to find some happiness and some hope. Uh, Lord, but uh, doesn't even know that Jesus is the answer to their problems. Uh, God, it's an indictment on us that, Lord, we haven't been in a state of revival. Uh, that would propel us to go beyond these walls uh, and to reach folks. Uh, uh, and God, I pray after today, uh, Lord, you just uh, 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 permeate our souls uh, uh, to the fact that you love sinners uh, and you died for sinners uh, and you want to save sinners. Uh, and God, use us to accomplish anything that you desire to do. Uh, now, Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Now, Father, help us. You know, Lord, now what I have, you just gave it to me over there in the chair. Lord, I know I'm nothing. Lord, I realized a long time ago, if anything's going to get done, you've got to do it. So, Father, I pray you'd touch somebody's heart tonight. And I pray you'd bless, for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. And amen. If we read the entire context of this chapter, you would find uh, that the great prophet Jeremiah, and he's great because uh, his name's in lights, uh, and uh, uh, auditoriums are sold out to hear him preach, uh, and everybody comes and brings offerings to his feet. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Jeremiah has prophesied for years uh, that if Israel don't repent, Israel's going to perish. Uh, and that kind of preaching in his day, uh, much like in our day, was not popular. Uh, they wanted their ears tickled. Uh, they wanted to be told how good they were. Uh, matter of fact, the king of Israel even had his prophets stand up and prophesy peace and safety. Uh, and yet the Lord said, uh, uh, I have not spoken through them. Uh, uh, but Jeremiah would preach, uh, turn or burn, turn or burn. Uh, judgment's coming, judgment's coming. Uh, uh, Jeremiah had convinced himself they'd repent. Uh, listen. You can't preach the Word of God if you don't have hope, hope that people are going to listen and do what God says. Yeah. And Jeremiah was warned from the day he was called that God was sending him to a stiff-necked people uncircumcised of heart. And God told him he made him an iron pillar. And yet, after years of preaching, the, the corrosion had worked on the pillar. By the time we get to chapter 20, they've heard all they wanted to hear out of Jeremiah. So they put him in the stocks outside the temple with his head and his arms through. And everybody that came to the temple mocked him, made fun of him. Said, oh yeah, God's really going to send judgment. And they made fun of the man of God. The Bible says he was in derision daily. Every day. He was mocked. Every day he was made fun of. Every day he was bullied and persecuted uh, to the point where Jeremiah said, what's the use? And Jeremiah quit in his heart. 
In this verse, he says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Jeremiah said, that's it. I've done all I can do. He kind of quoted Popeye. I've stands all I can stands, and I can't stands no more. He was done. He said, that's it. I've given them my last ounce of sweat, my last uh, a bit of effort. I've done all that I can do. Uh, they don't want God. They can die and go to hell. That's what he was saying. He said, I'm done. I am not going through this anymore. Then there's a little conjunction. You see, there's been a lot of preachers quit over the years. And then the next part of that verse comes into play. He says, but... <laughs> His word was in mine heart as a burning fire. It amazes me how many men will stand up and proclaim who can and who cannot preach today. Who's qualified and who's not qualified. Uh, 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 can I say Jeremiah was not a successful preacher. Matter of fact, in 40 years of preaching, we have no evidence uh, that he ever had a convert to God. Uh, uh, as far as the world looks at him, uh, he's a failure. Uh, uh, he's not qualified. Uh, he's not fit. Uh, uh, but can I say, uh, in God's eyes, he's just as successful uh, as D.L. Moody, uh, as Charles Haddon Spurgeon, uh, as any great preacher that's ever been uh, uh, that uh, saw many come to Christ uh, because Jeremiah I did exactly what God called him to do. He said, His word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. He said, I could not stay. In other words, I couldn't stay quit. I had to go back to preaching. And he went on to preaching. And even when judgment came and they were taken in captivity, God had favor on Jeremiah and he didn't go into captivity like the rest of them. He lived in a favorable wonderful state but I'm interested in this verse where he said this he said but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones and here's what I'm looking at and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay you know what Jeremiah is saying? He said his word was burning inside. Did you ever not be in the will of God and know you're not in the will of God and God tell you you're not in the will of God? That burning inside? No. Huh? You can be at Steak and Shake eating a cheeseburger uh, and they got the Motown on the radio behind you and all you can hear is God saying, you ain't right with God. Hmm? You ever been there? No. Huh? Well, he's, he's sitting there uh, 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 and he's quit uh, and God's word just keeps burning with inside him uh, and he knows he can't quit. He knows he's uh, 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 not able to just throw in the towel. Uh, he knows he needs to get back doing what God told him to do. But I'm interested in that he was weary with forbearing. You know what that phrase really means? God was wearing him out. Hmm? Now, I haven't got all the 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 week's uh, 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 highlights and what you went through this week. But you know what I heard when you told me up there on the stage this morning? God was wearing you out this week. He wore you out. And it wasn't, any, it wasn't pleasant while He was wearing you out. He was stripping the very fiber of Clint Ruby from Clint Ruby. And the reason being is some young people needed to hear that God's still on the throne. We experienced what we had this morning because God chose to wear somebody out. Hmm? And so I want to give you a little thought tonight on when God wears you out. Now listen, I grew up in a day and age where parents still wore out their children. Usually it was quick, didn't last long as far as the wearing out, but it, it had an effect for a long time. Hmm? Can I say, a lot of times God... Uh, he, he don't have to constantly beat you up to wear you out. Now, sometimes he does. Sometimes he won't let you sleep. Sometimes he won't let you enjoy your food when you're eating. 
Sometimes uh, every thought, if you're working behind a machine and that machine's running, all you can hear is God speaking to you. Uh, sometimes driving down the road, you don't remember uh, stopping at traffic lights. You don't remember uh, about taking turns. You don't remember about curves in the road. Uh, all you can hear is God speaking to you and God wearing you out. Uh, uh, but listen, sometimes God can do it just in a message, uh, in a service. Uh, but sometimes God camps where you eat and where you live and eat chooses to wear you out and the whole purpose is is he wants to strip you of things that is robbing you of him and replace them with him and I got to thinking about sitting over there brother Phil singing about heaven and I'm getting wore out thinking I'm going to have to get up for it in you all and I didn't have anything uh, and God said here it is can I say when God wears you out first of all it opposes your flesh. Your flesh does not enjoy what you are doing here today. Your flesh does not enjoy uh, uh, when uh, uh, everything gets rearranged. Your flesh likes routine. Your flesh likes coming in uh, and knowing uh, uh, you're going to sing a song and uh, you're going to get some announcements and then somebody's going to sing a special. Uh, then Brother Doug's going to hoop and holler and while he's doing it, uh, you can think about what you need at the grocery store, what you're going to do on the job tomorrow and everything else. Uh, 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 and then uh, you're going to have an invitation. Nobody's going to go. We're going to go to the house. Uh, I mean, the flesh likes routine. The flesh doesn't like it when God's in control. Uh, the flesh doesn't like it uh, uh, when we don't know what's coming next. Uh, uh, the flesh uh, doesn't like the things of God. Uh, and my dear friends uh, week in and week out if we continue to feed the flesh uh, let the flesh rule in our lives. Uh, it robs God of the place he wants in our lives uh, and so sometimes God uh, will come down our path uh, and he'll wear us out uh, and he'll work on us uh, uh, because he wants uh, uh, him to take control. It will oppose your flesh when God wears you out. Amen. I didn't get many whippings when I was a kid. I deserved a lot. <laughs> but I didn't get many. But the ones I got still stick with me today. Mm. The flesh don't like getting wore out. We don't like it. And can I say when God gets to whipping on your flesh, your flesh really don't like it. Uh, sometimes God will strip you of everything, not because you're living wicked, Brother Donald, not because uh, 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 you desire worldly things. Uh, uh, it's because God wants more presence in your life. And He'll work on you. But your flesh, it, 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 it opposes your flesh. Your flesh don't like the things of God. I heard this preach when I was a teenager. It amazes me I remember it because I can't remember yesterday, but I can remember this message. I remember... Preacher preaching on two big old dogs. He said, The one you feed the most be the strongest. And he tied that into our two natures. See, if you're saved, you got your old man nature, your fleshly nature. And then you got that new man, that which God put inside of you, that spiritual nature. Uh, and the same applies the one you feed the most is going to be the strongest. And sometimes God just wants to wear your flesh out so that your spiritual man's stronger. Mm. And I say, when he wears you out, it'll oppose your flesh. When God wears us out, it'll overwhelm our mindset. A lot of times, we think we know what's best. A lot of times, we think we got it figured out. You know what I love about the Bible? I mean, I've only been studying it 46 years. You know what I love about it? Every time I open it, it still dumbfounds me. How a holy God would look down and want to take up His residence inside of me. That blows me away. And I can read a passage for the hundredth time and see something I never saw before. You know why? Because these little finite minds can only handle a little bit at a time. And God just gives us a little here uh, and a little there uh, and a little there. Uh, but when God wears you out, it is to overwhelm your mindset because you don't have it figured out, uh, brother or sister. You think you do. Hmm? Listen, 
God can make a black cow eat green grass and give white milk. You can't even figure that out, let alone how God threw the stars out there on nothing. Let alone how God works on the heart of a sinner and breaks that heart of a sinner to bring them to the saving knowledge of Christ. You can't figure it all out. You can't figure out how God would take somebody like you and impact somebody else's life. You can't figure it out. But if you're not careful, you'll get into routine uh, uh, where you just go through the motions uh, and you think you know it all uh, and your flesh convinces you you've known enough uh, and that you don't have to study and you don't have to pray and you don't have to depend on God uh, and God will wear you out to overwhelm your mindset to let you realize you do need Him. Hmm? Now, I know the world says we're weak-minded. Who cares what the world says? I'm interested in what God says. Yeah, I am weak-minded. I, I don't have all the answers. I cannot control my own destiny. I just depend on God to handle it all, huh? But hey, when God wears you out, it'll overwhelm your mind. I like it when He overwhelms us like He did this morning. I like it. I like it when I don't know what's coming next. It's scary. But Phil said, oh, I'm, I'm, he said, I'm afraid. I'm up here. I'm fearful. I was sitting over there. I said, I, said, I am too, because I was fearful. I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. i got all these people going to be looking at me, and I'm going to look like an idiot. I don't like looking like an idiot. But if God will get glory for me looking like an idiot, maybe look like a fool. I don't care. Huh? We don't have all the answers. And sometimes God just rolls back the curtain to show how big He really is Amen. and what He's really capable of doing. You see, I, I'm an odd bird, I understand that. But I really believe that nothing is impossible with God. I talked to Brother Sammy this week and he's talking about the island. He's talking about the officials down there uh, 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 chomping at the bit to maybe uh, 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 get this processing plant going and uh, uh, some other things. By the way, I told him why the stem cell was uh, uh, much more profitable. I told him uh, 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 why. Uh, 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 but uh, you know them. They're all hands on. They're all, con uh, you know, they're thinking about bananas uh, and we're thinking about dollars. Uh, uh, but listen, I talked to him for a while and he's all gung ho. Uh, uh, but listen, can I help you something uh, I believe God's big enough to transform that island both uh, economically but more importantly spiritually for the honor and glory of God and if God changes St. Lucia it'll change the whole Caribbean see I just believe that I don't believe God's limited where he can't do that you know why God don't do that in America because America's over God down there they don't have anything else hmm but see, when God wears you out, it'll overwhelm your mindset. See, I used to think I was something until God showed me really what I was, what I was made of. And I've learned a long time ago, He's well able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. That's why I told you, I don't limit God when I pray. I don't say, God, give me this. Because why would I want this when God wants to give me this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, amen. So I pray, God, whatever you got for me, I want it all. Yeah. Hmm? Listen, when God wears you out, it opposes our flesh. It overwhelms our mindset. Can I say this? It overcomes our fears. Now, I'd like to say we all got... You know, red capes and yellow S's on our chest and think we're Superman and we can handle it. And your flesh will lie to you and make you think you can't handle it. But Job said this, and I might have was going to preach along these lines today if the Lord let me, but he said no. But Job said this, the day of my greatest fear came upon me. I don't care how big and bad we think we are, there's something that can approach you that can shake your utter foundation of your life. Yeah. Amen. You might think you're something until you're having to hold on to your child's hand in the hospital and they're holding on to life. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Job went to ten funerals in one day. Yeah. Mm. There's something... 
that would absolutely devastate each and every one of us. Now, what might devastate you might be different what devastates me. There is something that will bring fear to all of us. And can I say the reason there aren't people that are more successful than what they are is this little phrase, fear of loss is greater than fear of gain. You know why we don't win the world? Because we're afraid we're going to lose what we have. We're afraid that if we step outside of our comfort zone and let God use us, He might require more of us than we're willing to pay. And fear of loss of what we have is greater than fear of gain of what God could give us. But you see, when He wears you out, He overcomes your fear. Why do you think there are some like Peter who step out of the boat? The fear's been removed. They realize, <laughs> not my will but thine, Lord. They overcome their fear. A lot of people fearful of a lot of things. Hey, I get it. The world's scary. The unknown is scary. The thought that God would want to use any one of us, that's scary. But when God wears you out, it overcomes your fears. Hmm. We all have anxieties about something. But when God gets a hold of you and He grips your soul and you do business with God, He changes you. And you realize He's greater than your fears. Hmm. Jacob became Israel after God got a hold of him. Are you listening? Sometimes God has to wear you out. Go study that out. Jacob wrestled with God, and he came out of Israel. Oh, he had a little limp, a little hitch in his giddy-up. But hey, he had the blessings of God in his life from that point forward. He was not the same. Hmm. And see, when God wears us out, it'll overcome our fears. Hmm. There's so many people just so afraid. They're going to mess up. So afraid of this. So you let God wear you out and God grip your soul, you're not afraid of anything anymore. He's well able to take care of you. And then I thought about this lastly. When God wears you out and you become weary with forbearing, that last part of that verse comes into place. He says, and I could not stay. And you go read, and Jeremiah never quits again. You see, after God wears you out, after God has dealt with your flesh, and after God has dealt with your mind, and after God has overcome your fears, then God overflows your soul when we become obedient. You know why God just blew through here today? Because some folks were obedient. God had wore them out. And I know he was the star of the day. You ain't never living that one down, Jack. I've always called him the jewel of the church. His last name's Ruby. Now he's the star jewel, huh? But I'm going to tell you something. Clinton wasn't the only one God wore out this week. There were some other folks that dealt with God all week long. Spent time with God. And God worked on them and God helped them and God stripped them of some things and God worked in their soul. And, their, and when they came to church today, they were obedient. And when God wears you out and He deals with your flesh and your mind and He deals with your fears and you finally get to the point where you surrender and say, Yes, Lord, then He overflows at your obedience. Then he does the work. So many times, God wears us out. He wears our flesh out. Wears our minds out. Most preachers I know don't sleep much. So our minds are constantly being either attacked by the devil or worn out by the Lord. wears on our minds, wears on this flesh, overcomes our fears, gives us that Holy Ghost boldness. 
And so many of God's people come to church, they're wore out physically and mentally. God's been dealing with them. But they never get to that point where they give it all to Him. And they never see the blessings overflow. God doesn't wear you out because He's bored. God wears you out and He brings you to a point where you're willing to throw up the white towel and say, I give up, Lord. It's all yours. And when you come to that point, that's when the blessings start overflowing. That's when the peace that passes all understanding comes. That's when the joy and the love... That's when God, He has done squeeze you. That's when the juice starts coming out of you. There's nothing worse than having some dried up fruit with no juice. But when God's wearing you out, He's just trying to get some juice out of you that others can enjoy the sweetness of God. Now let me ask you a question. God been working on you? If He has... You need to get in the altar and thank Him. The Bible makes it clear that God sought for a man to stand in the gap and make up a hedge, and He said He found none over there in Ezekiel. See, God's always looking for somebody who'll just be a vessel that He can use to impact somebody else. If God's been wearing you out, that's because you have found favor with God and he wants to use you to help somebody else. And can I say the greatest thing that will ever be said of you is how God used you to impact somebody else. And friend, if you've impacted somebody else for Jesus Christ, <laughs> there's nothing greater than that. I mean, look, we, we're nothing. But when God chooses to use nothing to change somebody's everything, what a blessing. God wants to use you to impact our church, impact somebody else, maybe another believer, or maybe to impact some sinner to come to Christ. So if He's wearing you out, you ought to be thankful. You ought to be sensitive. Learn the lesson. Why is wearing you out? And then you ought to yield it all to Him. And when you yield at all, there is a fear that comes over you for not doing what God has put in your heart. You know why he couldn't stay? You know why? Because God wore him out, and he realized the consequences of not standing up and preaching what God had burned in his heart. Can I say? Nobody likes being mocked and ridiculed and made fun of, looked down upon. But I'd rather men speak evil of me than God. And when God wears you out, He burns that in you because He wants you to impact somebody else's life. And listen, God's warned some people out this week. Boy, it encourages me. I mean, God wants to do something. Amen. The danger is is if you continue going the course you want to go and God doesn't bother you. Y'all do some checking up. Paul said, let a man examine himself whether he be in the faith. Say, preacher, I know I'm saved. Then why is God not bothering you? Maybe you ought to say, Lord, what have I done to offend you? And let God work in your life. You ought to never be satisfied where you are spiritually. And you ought to never be satisfied in what you've done for God. Because there's always somebody else that needs some help. Are you weary with forbearing? You tired of God wearing you out? Just get obedient. Learn the lesson. Just get so oppressed with you that you want more of Him. And friend... The forbearing will end and the blessings will start flowing. God help us to want what God wants for our lives. Let's all stand, Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. That's all I got. Say, come.
We pick out a song. Folks are coming to pray. You just mind the Lord tonight. Let Him have His way. So that's when the blessings start flowing, friend. Let's pray. Father, we bless You. Thank You for Your goodness. God, why You'd choose to use any of us blows my mind, but I sure did like what I heard this morning. We may be unworthy, but we're not worthless. God, if You can get any return on Your investment from our souls, God, we want to be used of Thee to impact somebody else's life for the cause and honor and glory of Christ. Lord, we, we, we sure don't like it when we're being worn out, but Lord, when we realize we're being worn out for your glory, Lord, I pray that Lord, somebody can see Jesus in us. God, I pray we get sick of self and long for the touch of God like we've never had. Lord, help us not to become mechanical. Help us, Lord, to become sensitive. And God, get glory to your name. Bless now this invitation. These that have come, Lord, help them. Lord, certainly if there's somebody here not saved, Lord, I pray through cords of love you draw them. We'd see them born again tonight. Maybe you've been wearing them out with conviction so they get saved. I pray they'd give their heart to Jesus. Have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.